United Nations Refugee Agency has launched a major new campaign that calls on Africans to take action to solve the continent's worsening refugee crisis. The campaign is called Luku Luku, and it focuses on engaging ordinary citizens and corporate organizations to redefine the existing image of Africa's displacement crisis and to create a new image of the African refugee. Uh, it's being led by a number of high-level influencers, celebrities, different personalities, and we're joined in studio by Nomzamo Mbata, Trezor Raziki, and uh, Partnerships Manager for Africa, Nida Jehu Mazal. So good to see you all of you. Welcome. It's good to see you. Nice and bright and early because we were all celebrating the launch last night. So yes. here we sit, uh, a little bit fragile, but nonetheless, uh, I think yeah. just over the moon. It yes. was a great success. And Nida, I'm going to ask you that. Were you happy with the way it went last night? I couldn't have been happier. I was speaking to one of my colleagues and I said, when my children was born and when I got married, probably only are uh, the only moments I can remember being this joyful. Yeah. The reception, the, the, just the palpable love in the room was unbelievable. Yeah. Um, it Great. was an incredible feeling, yes. it really was. But yes. let's start at the beginning because people don't know what we're talking about. You know, there was just a select few people launching this new Luku Luku tribe. Yes. What is a Luku Luku tribe? Is everybody's question at the moment. Who wants to take it? <laughs> Nina, let me ask you. I mean, okay. you're the one who came up with it. So what is so it? It is a non-word and it's an every word um, because it doesn't belong to any ethnicity or any language. And it's a word that anybody can say. And it's a borderless movement. That's it. Um, so this is basically what it is. It is all of us. The Lukuluku tribe is all the best of us. All of us who want to upend this conversation of, around displacement into the public domain and change the narrative. Mm -hmm. So we are all Lukuluku tribe. Yeah. That's when we talk about changing the narrative, and let me, let me come to you, Nomzamo. The narrative of the, the African refugee, which we kept on hearing about last night, was the, the picture of the, the young black baby with a fly flying around its head. And yet, this is not what we want the picture to be anymore. No. What do we want it to be now? Oh, the picture is of hope, the picture of resilience, the picture is of overcoming, of jubilee, because, you know, I think our common thread as human beings is that we overcome, you know. Um, so for me, I'm tired of seeing um, the refugee being portrayed as helpless. And we glamorize that so much because we think, oh, there's a beautiful baby with a fly on its face. Let's take a picture next to it. I'm saying, let's not do that. Let's take the picture of the woman who is in the refugee camp, who is self-sustaining. She can make clothes. She's doing something mm -hmm. because she's trying to feed her family as well. She, that, that's her livelihood. And that's the picture of the refugee that I want us to have. And that's what we're saying about Luku Luku, that we are cross-continental, that we are beyond borders, we are beyond language, we are beyond culture. You know, it's time for us to really realize that we really are one tribe. Yeah. yeah. And our language is love. Yeah. And our language is hope. Yeah. It is. That's who we are. Now, I've almost saved the best for last because, <laughs> uh, Chizor, you have an incredible story. And I don't know if many South Africans know the story that you... Uh, were a refugee, and I say were in my sense of the word, because you still say you are, and you always will be uh, in your heart. But only two months ago, you got your papers to officially be a South African or to live here in South Africa as, as being legal and not a refugee anymore. Your story is, is very, very moving. What happened? Um, I mean, you know, just like millions of, uh, I think, Congolese people with the travels in Congo, with all kind of find a ways to, to get out, to really try to find a better living, also safe place to um, start a new life and fresh start. Mm -hmm. And um, I mean, it's been a crazy journey and, and I'm grateful for, for uh, to South Africa and the UNHCR for this structure that has really allowed me to be able to, to, to pursue my dreams without being, um, uh, being in a camp mm -hmm. and just being able to, be, to move around. And uh, I mean, the project that the Luku Luku is, is really personally very, very, very crucial uh, to the African continent. Also, just the global movement of trying to change the narrative of refugees. Mm -hmm. And uh, personally, I really believe it's, it's, it's at the right time with the crisis going on around the world and also with Libya. Mm -hmm. And just, I think, uh, just to remind people how important it is to, to really uplift others in this really crazy crisis of refugees going around the world. I mean, you, you, you came into South Africa when you were 17 years old. You lost both of your parents. You have eight siblings. Uh, and you thought, I've got to get out of here from the Congo. I have to try and make some money. And you came to South Africa. I mean, it's a long 
long story, but you started out as a car guard. That's right. And that's how you built um, yourself up. I think with a lot of refugees, you, you, you don't really have anything glamorous to start with. No. So whatever that you can get, you really treasure it. And it. I always tell people, um, I mean, you can really make something of yourself out of anything. You know, as long as you have the willingness and, and the courage and the hope. And I think that we saw in um, Zaleka refugee camp with most refugees. And uh, for me, uh, at that time, it did not look really great or, or I was very nervous. But for me, that was one of the greatest opportunities, being able to uh, make 2,000 rand a month as a refugee and mm -hmm. a security guard. And being a, from that money, being able to pursue my dream and build little by little. And today we're here. And uh, it's such an incredible, incredible um, uh, experience That's looking it. back. Yeah. I know both of you went to, to Malawi. I, I missed this trip, but I'm looking, <laughs> looking forward to understanding it as we embark on another journey next year. Yeah. Nida, I need to bring up what's happening in Libya now. Um, obviously, there has been a response from the UNHCR. What is the position on this and, and, and how do we try and combat what's going it's, on? It's horrid, it's atrocious, it's unbelievable um, and, and we, we are all gobsmacked with the rest of the world. Yeah. Um, but again, these are young Africans um, who feel hopeless. They are refugees and migrants mixed up in that, uh, in that. But for a person to end up like that in today's world is tragic. And that's mm. why a movement like Luku Luku, to bring back hope and respect and dignity that's to me. displaced Africans is something that everybody can rally around to really kind of reshape who the youth of Africa is. Africa is a very young country. The median age is 19.5 years old. Mm. Refugees are mostly, um, I think the, the average age of, in the camps that you went to is about... 23 to 25 yeah. and then you have the the very old also because they've been sitting there for for 20 years in some cases and so on and that then they, they, they are at a loss as what to do like he i mean to be a car guard completely invisible in the world it's yeah. a story for a lot of people yeah. and yeah. this is why we think that this movement really can help us shape it yeah uh, Namazama, talk to me about your experience in 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 malawi what, what was it like um being there, seeing the plight of the refugee, and particularly, I mean, South Africa's got a very different policy when it comes to refugees. We don't have yeah. camps where we ship people out. Yeah, and we barricade, and, and, and that's where you live, and that's where you kind of have to make do with the day, yes. because there's nothing really much to do. It was incredible. You know, it, 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 it shifted something in me. It changed me forever. You know, it, 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 I even say that even the word refugee camp has to change. I want, I want a stronger word yeah. to describe yeah. the plight yes. and, and, and the situation, you know. And, and I, and I commend like a, a the UN. It's like a refugee prison in a way. In I a commend way. the UNHCR for, for, for the work that they do and for, and for the efforts that they make in, in, in making sure that they are not uh, further marginalized you know, and further um, perceived as voiceless. So there's a quote that I read that says, a mother, a mother wouldn't put her child in a boat unless the land wasn't safe. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So when you think about the situation in Libya, they were going to go and jump on a boat to get yeah. to Italy. Yeah. Yeah. Now why would you do line. that if home was fine? Yeah. If your most trusted refuge was fine? You wouldn't. Mm -hmm. Trizor, this, this campaign, um, I know we're running out of time, <laughs> but this, this Luka Luka tribe, um, how is it going to work? What, what difference can a group possibly make to such a massive plight? So, uh, um, thank you so much. I look at Luka Luka as not just a group. Luka Luka is all of us. It's a community. And uh, I think that the whole uh, campaign is pretty much including every single person, not just on the African continent, but also globally, because we are all Luka Luka. We are all human beings and I think we are all really fighting to the, for the bring back the dignity of just and the humanity of refugees and that's pretty much um, the aim of the campaign so we all look look yeah, yeah. Um, there's, there, there is a way that the public can help as well the website is on the screen there unhcr.org mm -hmm. um, you can go you can donate um, that that's the one thing you can do there's also an SMS does anyone know the SMS line off by heart 42656 yay yes. <laughs> 4256 no 42656 <laughs> All right, that had to happen. You have to SMS the word Luku Luku yes, to this please. and you'll donate 30 rand. So it's 42656. 
SMS that word. It's the least you can do. You're sitting in your, in your home. You have a roof over your head. You have everything you need in your life. And just help somebody that needs some help. SMS that word, please. 42656. Luku, luku. Thank you, all of you. Thank, thank, you, you. thank you. Thank you. Thank you. This thank is the first of, us. I know, many, many more conversations yeah. we're going to have thank because you. we need to thank tell you. the African story ourselves. Yeah. And that's thank what's you. important. Thank yep. you very thank much. Thank you. Yep. Mbata, and of course, <laughs> Trezor, speaking to us here. Looking forward to seeing more of you. And of course, joining us in studio uh, is uh, Nida Jehu Mazal, who is the Partnerships Manager for Africa at the UNHCR. Thank you. Thank you. All right, time, 8 o'clock here on the.